Hi, this is Jeff, and uh, I've been enjoying your questions, and uh, I'm enjoying this one in particular because it's a follow-up on an answer that I've already given to one of the questions. And we had a, a brief discussion about malolactic fermentation, and uh, Stanley uh, uh, wants to follow up and say it's, uh, it's fair to say red wines undergo malolactic fermentation to stabilize them, then why is malolactic blocked with most white wines. Well, Stanley, I think the reason typically is that white wines for the most part are better with a little more acidity. If a white wine has no acidity or is flat or flabby, it becomes cloying and, and not very interesting. Uh, red wines have uh, tannins to deal with, and if a wine is too tart, uh, the tannins are more accentuated and the wine can be more astringent. So uh, a red wine's going through malolactic also has a byproduct of it doesn't change the tannins, but they have a softer appeal because it's delivered in a wine with less acidity. White wines, on the other hand, you want them to be bright, refreshing, uh, and have some life and livelihood and some zest and some vigor to them. And so much of that is, is, is due to the acidity. The other thing is white wines are cold fermented. And when wines are cold fermented, that's inhibiting malolactic to begin with. So it's very easy to control the, uh, uh, whether a white wine goes through malolactic because they rarely go through them on their own because they're usually kept at a cold temperature. You know, 50, 55 degrees um, is, is a temperature that um, for the population to generate uh, uh, enough volume and to replicate enough to undergo the malolactic, it's gonna take a while. Uh, lots of red wines in, in the cellar uh, at 55 degrees take a lot longer than they do at 68 or 70 degrees, which is the temperature we keep the cellar at after fermentation, after the alcoholic fermentation, when we're trying to induce the reds to go through the malolactic. We actually let the, the temperature in the cellar warm up a bit, and that helps us get through the, the malolactic in a more uh, timely fashion. And we find that advantageous because then we can uh, add some sulfur dioxide at the completion of the fermentation and protect ourselves from Britannomyces and some other spoilage organisms. So uh, that's, that's the reason, the difference between reds and whites. Uh, some whites go through malolactic. Most burgundies, white burgundies in the wines of Chablis go through uh, uh, the malolactic fermentation, but oftentimes those wines are already pretty crisp and they need to have the acid balanced and maybe perhaps reduced a little bit. And it also uh, helps favor the, the richness and the creaminess that those wines are known for. Uh, but uh, a bright crisp Riesling or Gruner Veltlinger or Gortzmeiner, uh, something that wants to deliver some, some balance and some acidity and some life, uh, those, those wines won't go through malolactic. And if they do, the wines are usually lesser for having done so because the, uh, the brightness is, is part of the charm of those wines. Thanks for your question, and if you've got a follow-up to that one, send it in. Thanks.